Hey, Mr. Eric Norlander, uh, here with IK Multimedia, and uh, who knows, Sid, who saw that coming, right? <laughs> who saw that coming? Hi there, Nick and Sonic State. Good to see you as always. So, check this out. It's a true analog, two oscillator, monophonic synthesizer from IK Multimedia. It starts off with uh, two variable shape oscillators, and the wave shape is actually continuously variable. So we can go from triangle to the sawtooth wave, from the sawtooth wave to the square wave, and if, as you saw, everything in between, and then to uh, pulse width modulation. And not only can we do pulse width modulation, we can actually modulate the complete shape of the wave. So if you want to modulate between triangle and saw, you can do that. If you want to modulate between uh, the sawtooth wave and the square wave, we can do that. All right, so it's continually variable. Continually right. variable. And that's true for both oscillators. So, and they're independently um, modulatable. So you can, um, yeah, modulate the shape of one and not the other, or both of them together, anything you like. You could have pulse width modulation on one. You could modulate between um, the triangle wave and the sawtooth wave on the other. Of course, we can uh, tune our oscillators independently, plus and minus one octave. And then in the middle of the knob travel is our detune. So this is in ah, cents. Okay. So if uh, we want to go, okay, we want to go up 10 cents on that one. We want to go down 16 cents on that one. Uh, or if we want to go, let's say we want to go up a fifth. That would be seven semitones, like so that. So you've done some smart stuff with the UI to kind of be able to uh, uh, utilize the, the, the controls that you've got, right? I like the way you said it, yes, thank you. <laughs> so yes, we tried, to, we tried to keep it as simple as possible and as compact as possible, because as you can tell from the you know, super compact design um, and the real streamlined nature of it, we really want this to be the analog synth for everyone. So, um, you know, I own a giant 1967 modular synthesizer. Yeah, we know that, you've got loads that is, of synths. Yeah, it's worth yeah. more than my house, I think. <laughs> but, um, you know, you, you have to have a university degree to work that, I, I, I imagine. So we wanted to design something that, that anyone could play. So whether, whether you're a, you know, virtuoso prog rock um, university graduate or you're a kid that wants to make EDM music um, on the train, um, right. We tried to come up with a design that would meet all of those needs. So, as you mentioned, um, the you interface is very... kind of thing, right? Yes. Yeah. Right. So we have the oscillator section and then four knobs. So our wave shape for oscillator one, wave shape for oscillator two, tuning for oscillator one, tuning for oscillator two. Um, the next section is the filter. So, and we have, of course, filters very important on an analog synth. It's a two-pole multi-mode resonant filter. So we've got our low pass, high pass, and band pass. And of course, resonance. Um, overdrive, this is a big deal on the synth. It's actually a custom overdrive circuit that will go from subtle saturation to full-on distortion. Okay. And this is, especially with the high pass and the band pass filters, if you push the drive and you push the resonance, this can be a very modern sounding uh, synth. So if you, if you want to get sounds from, uh, you know, a, a EDM style Euro rack system, we're able to pull them out of this synth. If you want to get something very um, classic, like a, you know, a classic Tangerine Dream kind of sound, or you want to play the, uh, the intro to Stranger Things, as Enrico do. does quite well, a bit. I, I, can we can we have a listen before we get too much more into the explanation? Oh, you didn't, you didn't actually want to hear it, did you? Well, only if it's working. Okay, obviously. okay. I think it works. Yeah. So, this is Enrico Della Versana. He's our product manager. So it's got a sequencer and kind of groove box uh, type of stuff. Built there, in. there are 100 presets, and each preset has its own 16-step sequencer. Along with an arpeggiator. So uh, you went for a two-pole filter. I'm pleased with that because I'm getting 
I, I, four poles had its had, had a lot of time in the sun. Maybe it's time for a two pole. Now. You know the, the the classic four pole Moog filter is a beautiful sound, but Moog does that very well. So we're happy to let them do that. So does your filter um, keep the bottom end going when you've got the resonance up? Right? Yes, it does. So um, is there also any uh, control or, you know, I noticed the power option, is it battery powered or is it USB powered or what's what? The answer is yes, it's both. You can run it on four AA batteries and it also runs on five volt USB. Right. So uh, you can plug it into your iOS device, into your uh, computer, and that will completely power the unit. Or if, uh, like I said, you're that kid that wants to be doing his uh, EDM tracks while on the train, you can put four AA batteries in it with your earbuds and work that way as well. And what about uh, control and MIDI and CV, any of that stuff going on? Um, we, well, it's, it's CV control, but it's CV control via MIDI. So we use MIDI continuous controllers uh, to access every parameter on the synth. Uh, there's also a computer editor that will let you do that as well. But if you just want to use the MIDI controller that you already have and assign MIDI uh, controller numbers to it, you can actually control all of these parameters that way. So we've got two oscillators. Is there a sub-oscillator as well? Or there is, is not a sub-oscillator. However, there is a separate white noise generator. Okay. So we can do everything from, uh, from wind to thunderclaps to pretty cool sounding snare drums. And hey. And, and uh, with the sequencer, um, can you... Uh, sequence kind of uh, motion sequence you know, parameter changes that kind of stuff this is not your first interview nick i can tell you know no, about these things i'm getting there i'm beginning yes. to, uh, to yes. understand what questions it, i should ask in fact you can you can you can actually completely reprogram the sound for each step and and enrico's made um a really cool <laughs> preset here where he's changing the sound from a kick drum to a snare drum to a tom um we can't really hear now ourselves but you'll hear a direct signal <laughs> So he's actually he's actually reprogramming the sound on every step. All right. So and how many channels of parameter uh, modulation can you put in there? Because sometimes you get three or five or. Uh, I, mean, I think it's twenty, right? Twenty. 20. Oh, There's nice. There's twenty different parameters that we can automate simultaneously. Right? Yes. Oh, that's cool. Yes. Wow. Okay. So. Uh, um, Will it work paraphonically? I mean, can you address individual oscillators? Uh, well, there's only or two oscillators, and no, it's just monophonic. Okay. Right. Yes. Um, and However, you can, of course, tune them in intervals if you want to do pad sounds and. And I guess you could automate the the interval between the uh, between the oscillators on each step, so you could effectively have a tune. Absolutely, yes. Okay. okay. Sink. Am I hearing sink in there somewhere as well? Oh, there's no sink. No, no sink. So, uh, portable, kind of fun, battery powered. I mean, what? You're the guy who's. Are you the driving force behind this, or did you kind of take a brief and run with it? I mean, what's your involvement with this, Eric? Um, it's it's been a really awesome collaboration between um, IK Multimedia and Sound Machines, who actually did the um, the electrical circuit design. Um, I had a lot to do uh, with the interface, of course, um, and our, our CEO of the company had the vision for a gadget synth in the first place, a product that you can take with you anywhere. That's very much the spirit of IK with the, you know, the whole mobile device yeah, line. Mean, Enrico has done, uh, this Enrico, different Enrico, has done quite a bit of work on the, on the sequencer section to come up with like a lot of these automatable parameters and a really nice interface that lets you um, you know not only record things but edit things I should mention about the um, the sequencer um, you can also what was I going to say I completely lost my train of thought that's all right I could ask you a question and throw you completely if you like yeah that would be great um, LFO what sort of rates do we are we talking about with the LFO we go up to about 20 Hertz we do not go into the audio range uh, but we have seven different LFO shapes we have sine wave, of course, triangle wave, uh, sawtooth down, sawtooth up, square wave, random, nice and to hear a good, hold. good solid corner on that as well. Is that uh, is that mini clockable? Yes. In fact, if you plug it into 
uh, your computer via USB and you send it MIDI clock, um, you can turn on sync and it will automatically sync to your MIDI clock okay, and it'll even start the sequence for you. Ah, right, okay. There's also an arpeggiator, of course, and the arpeggiator has 10 modes. There's a hold button, of course. So you've got a lot of little features in there. I mean, it's sort of, it might seem on the face of it kind of like, say, a gadget synth, but it's actually... Yes. Yeah, okay. Has it got MIDI connection, so you can just plug a MIDI keyboard in it? Do it does. It? Now it uses our... Here, we can turn it around for you. It uses our, our um, mini connections, but then it comes with the actual cables that are mini on this side and then the actual five pin din on the other side. So you don't ah, have okay. to go out and find these okay. are bizarre they, which cables. Which standard are they? Are they the Korg standard or are they the Arturia standard? Or they, I think they're the IK standard. IK I don't know. Standard, I, don't, yeah. I, didn't know I didn't even know there was a difference. <laughs> no, but, that's uh, okay, we right. include the cables, so you don't have to worry about that. Okay, cool. Yes. And um, what about cross modulation, that kind of stuff? Does it do? There's no cross modulation. The, the oscillators are, are independent of each and, other. Um, so there's no I FM ask, or. Uh, what about envelopes? How many envelopes? Uh, how many stages? Do they go snappy? Yeah, okay, so let's go through all that. Those are three great questions. There are two envelopes there's a filter envelope and an amplitude envelope. On the front panel, we give you two stages for each, and we, we basically chose the stages that you use most on this kind of a product. So it's the filter attack and decay, yeah. and it's the amplitude attack and release. Now they are actually four stage envelopes, so they're complete ADSRs for filter, complete ADSRs for uh, amplitude. We didn't want to fill up, we didn't want to give you too many rows here, and, yeah. and, and we wanted to keep it at a certain price point as well. So those additional two stages for each envelope are addressable via MIDI CC or via our computer editor. Ah, uh, okay, so you, yes. you don't get them via the front panel, but you can get to them elsewhere. Okay, yes, right, I exactly, yeah. exactly. Uh, do they loop? The envelopes do not loop. Okay. Yes. Okay, right. So we had to, as you can see, we had to make we had to make the decisions between something that could give you a very wide variety of sounds, but also not require a university degree for you to. Yeah, operate. well, absolutely. I mean, price and price and uh, function are, are obviously you know those are the things that one has to work with as a designer. Yes. yes. I mean, this is pretty affordable, right? It's uh, it's one ninety nine, uh, one ninety nine euros, one hundred ninety nine dollars. Uh, in Europe, that's exclusive of taxes because obviously it's different in different countries. And when is this actually going to be available? Then? July 2018. Okay, right. Yes. So pretty soon. In time soon. for my birthday. Ah, yes. excellent. Well, release maybe on someone your will Maybe someone will give me one for my birthday. Yeah. I can't believe you haven't already got one, <laughs> or at least ten, probably. Right. Some kind of giant <laughs> uh, configuration. We actually talked about doing this like kind of art piece where we would have like. 16 of them all linked together and like doing this big massive sequence but maybe we'll do that next year and i guess i mean you could i mean at this kind of price you could kind of uh, put some programmable uh, i mean is, is the firmware uh, upgradable so you could put like midi overflow for polyphonic operation that kind it of it is stuff? it doesn't it doesn't do midi overflow right now but if there's a demand for that it's certainly something we could add and what about uh, uh, are there any other kind of uh, hidden modulation routings that uh, you can get to by the editor that perhaps you can't get to via the front panel, like aftertouch or you know CC uh, modulation depth, that kind of stuff? Yes, we we, we can program all of that. Uh, you of course would program uh, pulse width modulation that way. Um, envelope two to pulse width, envelope two to oscillator shape. That's all done with MIDI CC. And we actually provide the editor, so we're not reliant on, on any kind of a third-party editor. There's an IK um, computer editor for you right, cool. that actually looks really cool. I mean, you know what our VIs look like and all of that. Ah, oh, that's something. We should talk about that thing over there, well, too. Well, maybe we'll do. Let's, yes. let's save that for another video. Okay, right. We're going to maximize the impact. Yes. So um, perhaps you could give us a couple more sort of uh, audio examples right. and then play us out. That would be great. Um, is it what's the, is the output on... Um, Stereo. It's it's a mini jack. Or it is a it, it works with a stereo mini jack. It's 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 monaural, so there's no panning effects yeah. or anything. But, but it, it works it works with a, a stereo mini jack. So if you plug in earbuds into it, it's going to be in both of your ears. Okay. So 
oscillate. We figured if you want a sine wave, you can just filter the sawtooth wave or the current wave. You can actually get a sine wave that way. And what about, uh, is there swing and step length? I mean, it's up to 16 steps, or is it more than? Up to 16 steps, and there is swing. I should mention this, there are, um, in the spirit of this, of this product, kind, kind of being the, the everyman synth, we've actually set up five performance buttons that do um, articulations. So there's dive, scoop, vibrato, wah, and trim. So vibrato does what you'd expect, it's pitch modulation, and it's at the speed of the LFO, so you can set the vibrato speed to whatever you want. Ah, okay. Wah is filter modulation. So there's a preset routing. So yes, that. and then tremolo is amplitude modulation. And that then, uses the internal LFO. Of yes, yeah. exactly. And then dive and scoop. Um, these are um, articulations that we were inspired by uh, some older synths like the CS80 and the Roland SH2 and SH5, where you could set a preset. Dive or scoop. So so dive goes it's like a down. Whammy bar. Exactly. So dive goes down to the note, scoop scoops up to the note. Okay. Cool. So um like we say, so uh do you say July? July. July. Yes. Uh available at all good retailers. Yes, how do you say that? Available at a retailer near you. Eric, thank you very much. Thank you, Nick. Pleasure.